Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at Lesson 3.2, which is all about the graph translation theorem. Now, a lot of this lesson is going to depend on your understanding of the parent functions. So if you have not memorized those parent functions or if you have not seen that video um, about the parent functions, you want to make sure you do that because those parent functions are going to be very important to being, to being able to understand this lesson. Because what we're going to be doing in this lesson is we're going to be looking at how we can um, change or how we can write an equation based on the parent function and knowing how the graph of that parent function has moved, whether it's been to the left, right, up, or down. Because this section we're going to be introduced to a certain kind of transformation. A transformation is just a change that we do to a graph. Uh, sometimes that transformation can be a scale change, or maybe you're stretching it horizontally or vertically. Uh, or another kind of transformation is what we're talking about today, a translation, which basically just means you're taking a graph and we're sliding it to the left or to the right or up or down. Uh, and we call that a translation when we're moving it horizontally and or vertically. Now there's a certain way that we write our translations. And we call that a rule for a translation. And that's going to be in this box. And then we're going to be looking at what exactly is that graph translation theorem. So why don't we take a minute now to be able to look at uh, what this is all about with writing a translation and finding out what the equation is using that um, graph translation theorem. Okay, so here we have um, how we write a translation. We call this the uh, rule of a translation. It says uh, a translation of the plane is a transformation that maps each point onto this coordinate x plus h and y plus k. Now x plus h, h describes the horizontal shift. So if it's moving to the right three units, it would be x plus three. If it's moving to the left five units, it'd be x minus five. So h describes, again, the horizontal shift, where k represents the vertical shift. So if you're moving up one unit, it'd be y plus one. If you're moving down nine units, it'd be y minus nine. So a translation is exactly as it sounds. If you think about it this way, I, I don't know French. And if someone were trying to talk to me in French, I would need someone to translate that for me. I would need them to tell me exactly what's being said without knowing what is being said in French. And so that's what the translation theorem is, or what the translation is doing here, what this rule is, is it's telling us exactly what's being done without me needing to see what the graph is. So if I see x plus 7 and y minus 9, oh, I don't know, that means that we're moving it to the left, I'm sorry, we're moving it to the right 7 units, and if it was minus 9, it'd be going down 9 units. So it tells me exactly what's going on. So that's the rule of our translation. So let's look at some examples where we use that. So here it says the graph of y equals x squared is shown in the graph with its image under a translation. So y equals x squared, we know that's a parabola. Again, it's important to know these parent functions. So then that way, if we weren't given the graph, we would know exactly what's going on. The point 0, 0, which is the vertex of the pre-image, maps onto the vertex negative 3, 1 of the image. So again, we want to make sure that we understand some terms there that were in the previous uh, screen, that the original image, we call that the pre-image, the new image, we just call that the image. So we want to find a rule for the translation. Well, we can see here that it's moved three units to the left and one unit up. So to write that, my h is my horizontal shift. So it's going to be x plus negative 3, which we better write as x minus 3. And y, it's moving up one unit, so it'll be y plus 1. Now it says find the image of 2, 4 under this translation. So this rule that we have, x minus 3 and y plus 1, that rule applies to every single point on my pre-image to be able to figure out where the location would be on the new image. So the coordinate 2, 4, well, I just put that in for x and y. So 2 minus 3 would give us our coordinate for the, uh, or the x value of the coordinate. Put 4 in for y, and that's going to give you the y value for our new coordinate. So, negative, or so 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So it's going to be negative 1, 5 would be that new coordinate if it was moved to the left 3 units and up 1 unit. So why don't you guys try that on your own for this next one. So why don't you figure out what a rule would be for this translation. 
and then find the image of 6, negative 10 under this translation. translation. So go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you got this right. Okay, so here's what you should have gotten. So the rule for our translation here, we can see that it's negative 12, uh, 5 being moved from the original point, 0, 0. So let's move to the left 12 units and up 5 units. So it would be x minus 12 and y plus 5 would be the rule for the translation. Now 6, negative 10, that coordinate, if I take 6 minus 12, well, that's negative 6. If I take negative 10 plus 5, that's negative 5. So that means that that new coordinate, or that the new coordinate for 6, negative 10 would now be at negative 6, negative 5. Well, that brings us to what we call our graph translation theorem. Here's what the graph translation theorem is stating. And basically, this is the key right here for the graph translation theorem. And basically, what that is telling us is that if we know our values for h and k, we replace x in our original equation, whether it's the parent function or some other equation, we replace x with x minus whatever the h value is and y minus whatever the k value is. For example, here we have this absolute value function. We can, sh we can see here that the graph is shifted four units to the right. So a rule for this is I would say that my rule for my translation is it's x plus 4 and y stays the same. But notice my equation. Now this is where it gets a little bit, of tri a little bit tricky because our rule of our translation tells us exactly what's going on. When we go to take that rule and put it into our equation, it's going to be the opposite. So here we have our equation is not the absolute value of x plus 4, it's the absolute value of x minus 4. The reason for that is because my value for h is 4, my value for k is 0. So when I put 4 in my equation, it's going to be x minus the h value. So it's x, the absolute value of x minus 4 that I replace this x with. And the y stays the same. Now I could always work my way backwards now without having to see this graph or anything else, if I'm just given this equation here, I can see from that, even without looking at the graph, that the graph would be moved to the right four units. Because we look at that, it's x minus this four value. So remember, it's x minus what h is. So the fact that it's x minus four tells me that h would be four. Or another way that I tell students is, you just look to see what's happening with the x and take the opposite of it. So here it's x minus four, so the opposite of that is positive 4. So that means this graph moved to the right 4 units. And the fact that nothing's going on with the y, or we don't have anything outside the absolute value, tells me that the y value stays the same. Let's look at another example. Because here's one where both the x and the y are changing. It says that the gra right are graphs of the function y equals the uh, square root of 25 minus x squared, and its image under the translation of x plus 5 and y minus 4. Both are semicircles. Find an equation for the image. So I can see here from my rule that it's going to be moved to the right five units and down four units. And we can see that is true from the graph. But I want to come up with, well, what's an equation that would give us that semicircle that's in red? Well, using that um, graph translation theorem, we're going to replace x with x minus h. Well, h is a positive 5. So my equation is going to have, under the square root, it's going to have 25, but replace the x with x minus the h value, so it would be x minus 5 in parentheses squared. Now the y value gets replaced with y minus k, but we've got to be careful. k is a negative 4. So y minus negative 4 becomes y plus 4. Now it's always best to have our equations in the form y equals... So what I want to do now is I want to subtract 4 from both sides. And when I do that, you don't subtract 4 from inside the square root. That stays the same. We don't touch that. That we have to leave alone. But when I subtract 4 from both sides, I put the minus 4 outside the square root. And that would be my answer. So now let's take a second now and let's imagine that we weren't given the graph. And we were just given this new equation, the y equals the square root of 25 minus x minus 5 squared, all minus 4. And if I wanted to figure out, well, how is this different from the original function? I would take and look to see, well, what's happening with the x? Well, it's minus 5. So take the opposite of that, and that means it's moved to the right 5 units. Now you've got to be careful, because this equation that I have circled here in green 
This minus 4 is not with the y. So basically what you do is we would um, just ignore this piece and see that we would have y is negative 4. So that means that the graph has moved down 4 units. And again, this, so we look at the x, and we can see that there, that the x, the opposite of that is a positive 5. So it needs to go to the right 5. Ignore the square root portion. We can see that it moves down 4 units. Or if the equation was written like it is in purple, we would take the opposite of what's happening with the x to see what happens with the uh, graph horizontally. So we'd see that it moves to the right 5 units. And then we would look at the y and see that, oh, it's y plus 4. So in that case, since this plus 4 is with the y, we would take the opposite of it, which means negative 4, which means we'd be going down 4 units. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, but hopefully after practice, you'll see that it's not that difficult once you get the hang of it. So without using your graphing calculator, we want to figure out how the graphs of y equals x cubed and y equals x plus 4.2 cubed minus 5 compare to each other. Now again, this is why we want to know these parent functions. This is our parent function for a cubic function. So it's going to be one of these graphs that are kind of a zigzag line, quadrants 1 and 3. So we want to see how does this graph of y equals x cubed compare to this one. Well, we're going to use that graph translation theorem. So again, I look at my x here, and I can see that it's x plus 4.2. So that tells me that the graph is going to move horizontally, but it's going to move horizontally to the left 4.2 units. Then I can see here that we have this minus 5. But remember, when it's written like this, what we can do is we can ignore this first piece and see that the graph moves down 5 units. And that's all we'd say. So it moves 4.2 units to the left and 5 units down. Let's look at another example. This time we're going to look at a situation where they give us a, an equation. And we're going to sketch a graph for that equation. Now when, we, when they say to sketch a graph, it doesn't have to be exact. But it should be in the right spot. So here's what I mean by that. Let's start out by looking at this equation. And look back at your notes, or hopefully you might have this memorized by now. But what is the parent function? Think about what is the parent function for this particular equation. Well, hopefully you're thinking of the inverse square variation, which is in the form y equals 1 divided by x squared. And when that was the case, we have asymptotes, remember. Those asymptotes are very important. The asymptotes for this equation would be x equals 0 and y equals 0. Because remember I said that, yes, the asymptotes are the x-axis and y-axis, but it's important to make sure you recognize these as the equations x equals 0 and y equals 0. x equals 0 is our vertical asymptote, which goes, over, goes through where x is 0, which goes over the y-axis. And y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. Where y is 0, so it goes, it's a horizontal line going through where y is 0, which is on top of the x-axis. So now I want to think about my new equation. I want to think about, well, what are these asymptotes? Well, let's think about what's going on here. The fact that it's plus 1 means the graph is being moved to the left one unit. Well, if it's being moved to the left one unit, our vertical asymptote, which was at x equals 0, is now going to be here at x equals negative 1. And you can also see that because the one number that you can never put in here is you can never put negative 1 in for x. Otherwise, you end up dividing by 0. And the other asymptote is going to be at negative 4. The reason why is because since this fraction can never be equal to 0, y would never equal 0 minus 4, or negative 4. So you have another asymptote there. And negative 4 is down here. So those are our new asymptotes. So they've moved to the left 1 unit and down 4 units. And now we want to sketch a graph for this. And so now remember the graph for a um, y equals 1x squared would just 
looks something like this. So we're going to take that same graph and shift it now according to these new asymptotes. Oops. And so that would be my new graph. So again, it doesn't have to be precise. We just have to have a nice sketch of what the graph would look like when we actually go to user calculator. Let's look at one last problem. It says if the graph of y equals negative 1 divided by 2x squared is translated 8 units up and 17 units to the left, so be careful here, what is an equation for its image? So I want you to take now what we've learned in this lesson and see if you can apply it to this. So we want to come up with a new equation. But remember, it's don't just read the numbers in the order they give them to you. This is 8 units up and 17 units to the left. So you want to be careful when you go to set this up. So why don't you guys pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so let's see what you should have gotten. So for this one, the 8 units up is referring to the fact that k is a positive 8. So if you wanted to, you could write it like this. Remember, it's, we replace y with y minus k, which would be y minus 8. And then in our denominator, it's going to be 2 times x. Remember, we replace x with x minus k. Well, k, since it's 17 units to the left, k is negative 17. Let's so replace x with x minus negative 17 becomes x plus 17. Don't forget the square. Or you could have written it like this. This would be your final answer. If you get the y by itself, it would be y equals negative 1 divided by 2 times x plus 17 squared. But then we put this plus 8 outside of there. Don't add the 8 to the numerator. Just write it outside the fraction of plus 8. And that would be our answer. That would be our equation in the form y equals if it's moved 8 units up and 17 units to the left. So... That is the end of our notes. So hopefully you have a better understanding now of this graph translation theorem. So remember, if the graph, graph translation theorem, it's a little tricky. You take um, the opposite of h and the opposite of k and replace y with y minus k and x minus h. But remember with the translation, the rule of a translation, what we talked about up here, it's translate, the rule tells us exactly what's happening with their graph. So that part there is pretty easy. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to apply these two different uh, rules. And so you can successfully complete your assignment. So with that, good luck.